Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Cooper, and as a gastroenterologist, I hear questions about crazy TikTok videos to prep for colonoscopies. Let's see where there's some good tips and which things are very misleading. My first tip is to make sure that instead of doing the Gatorade method, you actually put it in to apple juice, cold apple juice. Yes, this is a good tip. You can definitely use any number of liquids when you're doing a Miralax prep. We often recommend Gatorade. It does have some added electrolytes. The only important caveat is that whatever your preference of beverage is, do not use something that is red because it's gonna look like blood and we don't want that. But also not mix it with vodka. We don't want you mixing this with alcohol, even though that's a clear liquid. Save that for after the colonoscopy. The second tip is to make sure you get those wet wipes. They're not just for infants. They will save your ass. Yes, yes, that is true. They will. And I see patients on a daily basis that have a pretty chafed rear. So use something that's going to soothe that. And if you really want to splurge, get the wet wipe warmer. My third tip is if you have to go without eating for a period of time, of course, make sure you read all of the instructions, but normally they allow you yogurt, plain no. yogurt. Oh, she was being so sensible, but no, you cannot have yogurt before your colonoscopy. That is not a clear liquid in any sense. And it doesn't matter if it's plain, no yogurt. Look, I don't know what doctor thought it was a good idea to give your 80 year old patient a four liter ball prep, but it's probably not gonna happen. So nurses, what you could do, only if your patient agrees and make sure you pre-medicate them. Go ahead and put in that NG tube. You can that put NG the ball prep right through it. Make sure you have a doctor's order and pull it out when you're done. Yes, she is so correct. When an elderly patient comes in and they're in bad shape with rectal bleeding, the chances that they're gonna have a successful prep is slim. But this is why the ICU nurses are like poop fairies. They magically make it go away. And this is one of their tricks for doing so. While it's really uncomfortable to have that nasogastric tube placed, once it is in place, it's so much easier to get the prep down. And so I think that this is a good trick for people watching who might have a loved one hospitalized right now and they're worried, how is grandma possibly going to prep? This is definitely a very good option to get through it once she's been given a try to at least do it on her own. Final caveat, don't try this at home. Trying to ram a nasogastric tube down yourself is not going to work well, and you don't want it to get coiled up in your esophagus, and then you're just gonna be flooding your esophagus and then risk flooding your lungs. There's a reason that this is done in the hospital. Yeah, see, I told you, people think that you can do this. No, 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 do not drink the night before your colonoscopy. That is a bad idea to do before anesthesia. Also, a lot of people are under the impression that somehow the prep dehydrates you. It's actually balanced so that it does not. What will dehydrate you is drinking alcohol because the impacts that it has on your kidneys makes them let go of excess water. So please do not drink before your colonoscopy. Save it to celebrate afterwards once you get a stellar report. Number one, there is an alternative for colonoscopies. It is called a Cologuard test. It's a stool sample test. You can get the prescription for that from your doctor. It's 99% effective for detecting cancer. Okay, she's right. Cologuard is an alternative. And I definitely think that it's better to get something to screen for colon cancer than nothing. But it's really important to not be misled by some of the statistics that are advertised for Cologuard. And first of all, effectiveness is not even a real statistic. What is the real statistic on Cologuard is that it does have a very high negative predictive value, which means if you have a negative test, then you very confidently do not have colon cancer. But here's the problem with Cologuard. The negative predictive value for large polyps is actually less than a coin flip, which means it's really not good at all for detecting large polyps. And why is that important? Because removing a large polyp is your last chance to prevent cancer before it grows into the real thing. A large polyp can be detected about 95% of the time during a colonoscopy, and it can very often be removed with the same colonoscopy, which makes a colonoscopy a cancer prevention test rather than a cancer detection test. And that is such an important difference. So in conclusion, if you have a large polyp, chances are good that Cologuard will miss that. And the point of colon cancer screening is to detect those large polyps and remove them. Now, sure, Cologuard will three years later told you that you ended up getting cancer, 
but the goal here was to prevent cancer, not receive an invitation to chemotherapy. Number two, the prep. The prep is the most difficult and potentially even dangerous part of the colonoscopy because of the level of liquids that we lose and everybody knows about that. In fact, there's a doctor back here. Okay, so you're not really losing liquids if you're doing the prep correctly because it is a balanced solution. The colon, unlike the kidney, is unable to concentrate water. So therefore, whatever flushes through you, it goes through you. It's not actually losing water if you've balanced it correctly and you're drinking adequate water with the prep. In other words, follow the instructions. What goes into you comes out the other side full of poop. Devised a program where people got colonics instead of the prep before their colonoscopy because he had had so many elderly patients go into the hospital just from the prep. So you can get colonics as your pre-colonoscopy prep. It is an AMA approved pre-colonoscopy prep. Your doctor may not tell you that, but it's true. Okay, a couple things here. Yes, for certain patients, a colonic is an option in select centers. And I've even been in a place that this is what we did for very select patients in order to salvage their prep or when we knew they would fail all other means. We were using it for probably less than one in a hundred of our patients. It's not something that we were trying to hide away from them. What is she quoting though about AMA? I don't believe that she means the American Medical Association because the American Medical Association doesn't really take positions on these types of things. I believe she's talking about the Alternative Medicine Association, which is another trade group, but I just personally don't really feel like they're in a position to weigh in on this. They don't perform colonoscopies. That's the role of gastroenterologists. And I would encourage that you would follow the advice of your gastroenterologist in order to prepare for your colonoscopy. There's a lot of you that need to hear this today. The only time you really need to do a cleanse or a detox is if you're prepping for a colonoscopy. Yes, she is correct. That is the only time that you need to clean out your colon is if you're having a colonoscopy. Your colon was evolved to hold on to poop. It can do it. It's not causing toxins to invade your bloodstream. It is not causing you to be sick. Now, if you're constipated and you feel bloated, these are symptoms that are uncomfortable, but it's not causing cancer. It is not causing you a host of chronic health problems. Your colon has evolved to hold on to poop and it does not need a daily shower. Again, we keep finding crazy TikTok videos and there's some gems in there, but there's so many myths that we got to keep busting. So subscribe to the channel to keep watching with us. Thank you and be safe.